Welcome back to the Torque Test channel. I'll go ahead and make it clear from the outset that Matabo HPT, or Hikoki as it were, has no idea that we got this little guy, the new Matabo HPT WR36DE 36 volt mid torque. And I say new, but really it's not even out yet. We got this one from Brian from Workshop Addict, who got it from Matabo HPT. Be sure to check out his channel below and his vid on this impact also out today. We owe him a big thanks for the chance. After talking with Brian about impact wrenches and him briefly showing this one on his channel in some segments without calling attention to it, we were somehow able to shoehorn this upcoming mid torque out of his clutches for a couple days without telling Matabo HPT about it. And they still really have no idea about this episode. They're going to be finding out how it did for us today, the same time you are, right now. There's a few things that make this all new multi-volt addition to the HPT line that's due out in 2022 exciting for us. First, and mainly for us torque addicts, its specs. It's advertising a beefy 774 foot-pounds nut busting and 568 foot-pounds tightening. Not only does that pass up the Milwaukee Gen 2 mid 600 and 550 figures, that compares to the new XGT Makita mid torques 810 and even surpasses that one's tightening of 560, this time up to just 568. Meaning on our rank list, this will have the highest specs we'll be comparing performance to ever as we tighten in both forward and reverse bolt directions per an old school standard on this channel. But while the impressive 40 volt max XGT is a wallet terrifying $350 and even the Milwaukee is 219 retail, this new WR36DE is set to be $199 bare, coming in under both those tools despite its sky-high specs, and really among all cordless, comparing to that Milwaukee closest in price. It's like it's Makita's competition in more ways than one as well, taking that sort of chunky proportions route of that Makita, though it definitely looks small in this case that appears meant for a high torque, maybe this one's case isn't ready yet, it's also rocking a rubber nose cover, like the LXT High Torque does, and has this sort of standoff front protrusion of a battery on this 4 amp hour 36 volt example, like the Makita rocks in an even more sort of disjointed way. So far we only have this trusty 4 amp hour battery on hand as far as cordless goes today, like in past HPT testing, but we do also have their corded adapter for downtime free yet tethered action, which we'll plug in today to see if there's any difference there. While many of you red fans out there have begrudged the Makita's size despite its impressive performance lately, and the Gen 2 mid torque at 6 inches long is massively impressive for its size, it may be worth remembering that Milwaukee is, after all, the smallest mid torque on sale today, and a recent introduction at that. Outside of the Milwaukee and still on sale today, mid torques are often 7 inches like the DeWalt or 7.7 .7 inches like the Rigid Octane. This new 36 volt HPT is 6.6 .6 inches long, which is shorter than either of those options and shorter by a smidge than that Makita mid torque, all while bringing specs sort of on that next level playing field. While we all agree that the M18 size does make it a winner overall, a tool being a different size as this M18, which to date is the smallest offered ever, doesn't really make it not a mid torque if it isn't that smallest mid torque ever. At 4.2 pounds, it's coming in just shy of either 18 volt or 40 volt Makitas. It feels a little less wieldy in the hands for that tiny bit less weight, bulk, and size. But can it bring Makita power? Makita seems to be going down the road of inferring you only need a mid torque for most tasks, breaking out a high torque only if you really have to. But unlike Makita's half inch high torque, we really liked the Matabo HBT high torque when we tested that, and so did our rank chart. So let's see if this all new, not out yet, please don't sue us, Matabo HPT mid torque is poised to perform. Our first test is working torque, up first is the Milwaukee Gen 2 mid torque, which is its closest in price competition, and the pricey Makita XGT 40 volt on screen in black. Three hundred and thirty seven and three hundred sixty two. Both of these tools top of their game in this class. Now for the soon to be new, new, new to me, but not to you. I don't know the WR thirty six DE. Three hundred sixty one, just one foot pound shy in its median run versus that XGT Makita. Some serious beans already from this guy, especially considering the intended price point. 
Now for some reverse action, and we're going to rope in the 2960-23 Ace Milwaukee Mid Torque, since it's in general done better in these tests for head scratching reasons. Here's the XGT Makita up against that one on screen. Four hundred and six versus four hundred and seventy. That XGT building quite a gap now with those extra volts on hand. Can the similarly voltaged HPT keep up though? Here's that Matabo HPT. Four hundred and eighty, I'd say so. Somehow, so far, keeping up and then some with the much more pricey XGT Makita and maintaining its advantage over that Milwaukee. Impressive stuff. Our final test type is called best case scenario: batteries fresh off the chargers. Since the HPT multivolt batteries here enjoy some of those sweet twenty one seven hundred cells inside, we're going to employ Milwaukee's high output to compare with now. Their XC 8.0 comparing most closely, but the XC 6.0 making higher numbers on this mid torque in our findings. So that's what's on the menu today. Here's the high output M18 versus the XGT. Four hundred and seventy-eight versus five hundred and sixty-eight, with some sweet out-the-gate gains from the M18 when it's in its half-inch configuration using that high-output battery. Now for the upcoming Metabo HPT, last chance to bank some points before we hit the rank chart. <laughs> Five hundred and twenty-two, still massively impressive for a mid torque. Not quite keeping up with the XGT once things are this level of tight, but still putting up some serious numbers. It's probably worth reminding you that while these last two impacts up top see gains at the end, that doesn't mean in real life you'd need five or ten plus seconds of impacting to see a difference. We're starting from zero foot pounds of torque for testing purposes, but your bolt might be starting at three hundred, four hundred, or five hundred foot pounds worth of stuck. At which point, pick a spot on the chart, and there you'll see which tool has an advantage in the time it would be able to take something off or take it off at all. Before we plug this cordless impact wrench into the wall, because you know that's a thing, I guess. Let's see how the HPT ranks on our rank chart. Now, this tool's final score is going to have an asterisk because we normally buy tools here and can't buy this one yet. So, on the off chance it's a hopped up example they snuck some steroids into, it's getting an asterisk until we buy one for ourselves to double check. Stay tuned to our Instagram or our live rank chart for those of you who have that for updates on those results if they are predictably boring. Starting below the Milwaukee Makita, as it was up against them today, its runs are turned into points as 36, 48, and 52, not making as big a jump up in the final tests here as some others. At 6.6 .6 inches long, that's just about half inch longer than M18, but shy of the XGT earning 79.1 points, still lower than those others. 568 foot pounds tightening is what it promised. We tightened it in forward and reverse to the effect of 522 today. That's 92%, still quite good within this category. Perhaps its most impressive figure is a $199 bare tool price, which will confirm upon its debut. That's super competitive at this level and gets 39.4 points for it. That totals 346.5, knocking the LXC 18 volt Makita down from second and honestly coming way closer to taking over the top spot than we expected to see soon after witnessing the performance of this 40 volt Makita. And honestly, at this price point, pretty impressive compared to just about anything. Now the other rank lists we have that's been popular among those of you who could care less about money it's our average power ranking, which scores tools based on their power across a run alone, regardless of anything else. The new HPT gets 416, even a couple points up on the Milwaukee with an HD 12.0 or XC 6.0 shown here. 
Again, though, it gets an asterisk here. So what about plugging this guy in? Any real difference? If it makes less like we've seen before, maybe that was because the HBT high torque draws so much current. Let's find out. Here's the corded HBT versus its BCS run. So that 522 became 492, not a huge difference, but some maybe just enough to notice. But that is, of course, if you have a fully charged battery, the advantage of the corded adapter, of course, being you can impact theoretically until the gun overheats or fails, I'm guessing. We were impressed with this new mid-torque today. We're going to, of course, keep this in mind that it's a pre-market sample yet to be verified by purchasing one ourselves. But either way, at this size and intended price point is really taking the LXT Makita's lunch money, I think. Sort of here making a similar size, similar design mid-torque and doing it better with more volts. While not matching the XGT 40 volt performance overall, it's miles away from that price point that sort of was enough to hurt our wallet's feelings. Maybe you weren't surprised more volts made more of a gap over the M18. We know Milwaukee loves their first ever 18 volt patents, but if in your head as a viewer you already assumed the HPT was going to bring it because it just had more voltage, we'd love Milwaukee to someday stop fighting with one arm tied behind their back and then make their own flavor of this type of advantage if it really is that measurable. Something I think Metabo HPT has done the best at. Think about it. Mikito went the route of leaping from LXG to XGT with a whole new line with new tools, batteries, and chargers. DeWalt was able to sort of halfway bridge the gap with new 60 volt tools by making flex volts so your batteries and chargers could have double duty. Metabo HPT has done that and maybe we think even a little bit better mixing 18 volt and 36 volt tools in one platform. This 36 volt pack we use today working just fine in their 18 volt tools without there being that sort of concrete saw versus cordless drill sort of size difference you find with 60 volt versus 20 volt DeWalt's. We would be none too offended if Milwaukee sort of skimmed their competitors' homework on this one and made their own M36 batteries that were backwards compatible. Until then, if that sort of thing suits your fancy, there's always Metabo HPT. It's a very good tool. Big thanks to Brian at Workshop Addict for going covert ops and not spilling the beans on this one. And thank you for watching.